my channel and to today's video. I hope you're all okay. In today's video I'm going to be sharing some new fabrics that I've been buying and um, some plans that I have for coming months. I'm not going to say April because Easter holidays are coming up and I know that probably barely any of this will get made while the children are off <laughs> um, but that's okay um, and that's good. So I'm going to call this a kind of spring fabric haul because it will be for April and beyond. <laughs> so I have a few different fabrics to share with you today. Last week we had a little spout of really nice weather and it just made me think of spring and summer make so I did end up buying a few different sort of viscosey florally fabrics that I think will be great for spring and summer so I'm looking forward to sharing them with you today. So just before I get started if you're new to my channel my channel is all about sewing and sometimes knitting and other crafts but mainly sewing so I share fabric hauls um, what I've been making, sew alongs and inspiration videos and things like that so if you aren't already subscribed I'd love you to consider subscribing and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos and if you are already subscribed and you're a regular viewer thank you so much for joining me again I really appreciate it. So before I get started and before I forget I'll just quickly share what I'm wearing. So today I'm wearing another hand knitted cardigan um, and this is one that I haven't really worn that much so far and the reason for that is, I don't know if anyone else gets like this, but I feel as though I'm so proud of it <laughs> because of the lace detail on it and everything and I do really want to block this because I haven't blocked it properly yet. Um, but I just feel as though I almost don't want to wear it because I'm so pleased with it. <laughs> um, but does anyone else get like that? Please let me know in the comments. But I really should wear it because obviously I made it to wear, so I need to wear it. Um, but yeah, this is um, a really old fashioned sort of knitting pattern and I'll list it below because I can't remember the number of it, but it's the Sirdar one. And it's one of those ones that looks a little bit sort of um, outdated, I guess, but um, I just really like the lace design on it, so I thought I'd give it a go and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So that's what I'm wearing today. So I actually have six sewing plans to share with you, or six fabrics to share, and a knitting project that I've just started as well. So first of all I'll start with sewing projects and um, a couple of jersey things that I want to get sewn up. So in the not too distant future I'd really like to get sewn up another couple of versions of the toaster sweater. So I have made one version of this that I made in probably completely the wrong fabric. It was too drapey really for the structure of this jumper so I've got some fabric ready to make um, another couple of versions and I want to make one of each version. So the first version I'm hoping to make is the one with the high neck here and then the hem bands and cuffs um, and I have a fabric that I have shared already so I'll just briefly share it again and that's this one. It's a really cosy melange I think it's called um, jersey with a really cosy fleece back to it um, and yeah I want to give that high neck version of the toaster sweater another go in this one and I think that would be a really nice one for sort of springtime where it's still a bit chilly and everything. Um, so that's that one, I've already shared that one so I won't go on about that one too much. And then I recently spotted this lovely French terry fabric on a Sew Me Sunshine email and um, it was one of those ones that I just had to buy. I love anything stripey, I love anything sort of nautical looking or Breton looking um, so this really caught my eye and it's a really lovely soft French terry, it's quite thin so there's no fleece on the back or anything, it's just that sort of um, knit French terry texture. Um, so a bit of a thinner one this one, a little bit more drapey. And with this one I really want to make up version 2 of the toaster sweater. So this is the one with um, a straight hem with splits at the hem. So it's got like a split hem detail to the side. Um, and then I want to make it with the sort of the funnel neck. Hopefully that will focus okay. <laughs> so it's not such a high neck this one, it's more of a sort of a, a drapey boxy style I guess. Um, and I thought that would be really nice made up in this stripey um, French terry fabric and I thought it would be a really good one to wear with jeans and things and maybe even shorts in the spring and summertime and something to just sort of put on when it's a little bit chillier in the evenings and I just thought the style of that um, toaster sweater would suit the stripes really nicely. So that's what I'm planning to make from that one and those two, fingers crossed, they should be quite quick makes and we're going away over Easter time and I'd really really love to get these made up before we go. <laughs> 
Well, I don't know if that's going to be possible or not because it's only a few weeks away. Um, but anyway, if I can, then I'd like to get these made for the Easter holidays when we go away because I think they'll be nice and cosy and it'll be good to have those before it gets too warm to wear them, if it ever does. And the next one is a really lovely one and I haven't actually even taken it out of the box properly yet because I wanted to show you how it arrived because it's just so pretty. So this is the first time I've ever ordered from Felicity Fabrics and um, I'm so impressed with how this arrived, it was so pretty. So it came in a lovely box like this um, and then it says luxury is handmade on the front and then it's all wrapped up in tissue paper and inside prettiest fabric ever. It's a lovely um, pink and black and white viscose floral. I will get this out of the box to show you, but it's one of those ones where I just don't want to take it out and wash it because it looks so lovely all packed up like that. Here it is, I managed to um, get it out of the box in the end. <laughs> so this is a really lovely, it's quite a heavyweight um, viscose actually. It's really nice and soft and floaty and it's on a lovely corally pink background with little black and white flowers and spots all over it. And this is actually for another collaboration video that I'm going to be doing with Becky from Notes from the Sewing Room. So Becky and I have um, come together in the past and done a couple of videos together. We've sewn the same pattern or we've done a kind of one fabric two ways video before. And that's actually what we're going to be doing this time. So Becky has actually brought the same fabric and we're going to be making something up. And we're not going to tell each other what we're making. We're going to reveal it in um, a kind of a reveal type video and um, share what we've both been making with the same fabric and I think it's sometimes good to do videos like that because it's really interesting to see what other people would use the same fabric as you for. Um, so I do have an idea of what I want to make with this and I'm not going to share it just yet because obviously I want to keep it a secret for the time being but hopefully that will be coming towards the end of April. This is one that I do need to get on with quite quickly. Um, but this, yeah, such a lovely, lovely, pretty pink fabric. I don't often go for pinks, actually, but I just really love this coral tone, and I think it's really lovely with the black and white. So, yeah, really looking forward to getting on with that one. That one needs to have a wash. Next is um, one that I just picked up on a bit of a spur-of-the-moment thing. Um, I was in town near us, and um, on a Friday they have this little fabric market still there, and often they don't really have very nice fabrics but um, last Friday I was in town and um, the fabric store was there and he had quite a few viscose fabrics on his stall and they're only £3 a metre so I went for this one it's quite a bright um, green colour quite a vibrant green viscose with a white floral design all over it and he gave me three metres of this for £7 <laughs> so I bought this I wish I'd got more now actually because he did have a couple of other designs and I should have just got more but I didn't have enough cash on me at the time so I just went for one um, design. So yeah I got three metres of this without really any idea what I was going to do with it but I thought it would make a really lovely spring summer maxi dress since I've got three metres of this that should be enough. Um, and something that I've been wanting to try for a little while is actually to make a slight hack of the Lyra dress or another hack of the Lyra dress I should say because I've done a couple already but um, what I want to try yeah, basically is to make a version of the Lyra dress that buttons down completely to the hem so it opens in the middle um, like, a, like a full shirt dress I guess. So at the moment with the Lyra dress it's just the bodice that buttons down and then the skirt is attached into gathered tiers or one gathered tier if you prefer. So what I want to try and do is make the, um, the midi length version with the two tiers like in the pattern image here but I want to have it open so that it buttons down to the bottom um, so I think I've got an idea of how I want to do that and I thought rather than cut into an expensive fabric while I'm just testing out how this is going to work I will use this as a sort of wearable twirl um, it's going to be quite a lot of green <laughs> uh, maybe a bit of an overpoweringly green dress but I think for a 12 and something to just test out this idea, it will be a good one to try that on. And I think I'll just do it with some short sleeves or maybe even a little puff sleeve. Maybe I could just shorten the longer sleeves, which are gathered in at the cuff with elastic and make some little puffy short sleeves. That might be quite nice. I'll have a think about that. But yeah, that's been something that I've been wanting to try for ages for spring and summer. So I think that's what I'll be using this green for. 
Love the lighter dress. I can't wait to make another version of that up. I'm really excited for spring and summer dresses now. It's just my element. <laughs> So another fabric, which was a real um, impulse buy, and this actually popped up on a Minerva email. They send around their fabric emails um, with some sort of inspiration and things that you might like to try your, the fabrics with. And this one um, was on one of their emails and I just had to have it. <laughs> it's one of those ones, it was a real impulse buy and I just wanted to buy it straight away. This is an Atelier Brunette crepe, it's a viscose crepe. It's really lovely and really drapey and it's actually quite opaque so sometimes crepes can be quite sheer or quite thin but this one's really um, quite opaque so it's not too see-through um, and it's on a sort of a mustardy rusty background I guess with some white spots and white flowers all over it and some navy um, circle details as part of the flowers in there as well so I really loved this one and I just felt like I just needed to buy it. And um, the pattern that they'd actually paired this fabric with was the McCall's 7969. So this is a pattern that I've had my eye on again and I've seen so many lovely versions in the sewing community on Instagram and on YouTube and everything. But I'm just a little bit worried to make because I've heard that it's really oversized and um, I'm a bit worried about that crossover bodice and whether it will gape and things like that. Lots of things have been putting me off of making it. But I did think it would be a really nice pair for this fabric. I thought it would work really nicely for that, just like Minerva I'd put it with. Um, so I'm thinking about that one, but I'm also thinking that if I'm not going to like that style of dress, I probably need to do a twirl in something not so lovely before I cut into this one, because I definitely don't want to use this for a dress that I'm not going to be 100% sold on. So yeah, that's the kind of idea for that. I do think it would be a really lovely pairing actually if it worked, but um, yeah, as I say, I'm just a bit nervous of cutting into this fabric before I know that I'm gonna like the dress. Um, but this will be a summer dress of some sort and it's gonna be a shorter one because I only have two meters or maybe two and a half meters, two and a half meters. So I'm not sure I'd get a midi dress out of this. I might do, I'm not sure, but it will be some kind of spring summer dress it's just so lovely i love this and it does come in a couple of other colorways as well so um yeah i'll link that one down below if you're interested in that one i do have one more fabric on the way actually another viscose from minerva and this will be my next brand ambassador um review for them so i'll just pop in an image of the fabric because it hasn't actually arrived yet so this one I think I want to use for another pattern that I think it will be really lovely for spring and summer and it's the named clothing Taker, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it but I think it's Taker, it's a blouse and dress pattern and it's a really lovely completely buttoned down a sort of shirt dress pattern again but it's got a lovely v-neck and some gathery short sleeves and it's on a yoke so the back and front bodice are kind of gathered in at the yoke. I believe. <laughs> um, and it's just a really lovely summer dress and I just really want to try this one out. Um, so I may use that viscose from Minerva for that one. Again, I think it might be one that requires a little bit of fitting, um, but I'm just hoping that it might be one that I can sort out without making a twirl. Um, I'm not a big fan of making twirls, you might gather, <laughs> because I feel as though once I've made something, I don't want to just make it again in a different fabric. So I always prefer, if I can, to make wearable twirls of things. Um, that I can still wear um, if they turn out okay and then I would like to and then if I want to make it in a more fancy fabric I can sort of invest and um, make it again in a different fabric but I'm definitely not one for making sort of calico twirls and things like that I'd rather just get stuck straight in and sort things out along the way which probably isn't the best or most professional way to do things sometimes but um, it works for me let me know in the comments if you're a twirl maker or not I'm definitely a bit too impatient sometimes to make twirls unless it's for a coat or something that really needs fitting so one last viscosey um, make that I have planned for sort of spring and summer time is to make another patina blouse. And this is the patina blouse by Friday Pattern Company. It's a really lovely blouse pattern and I've made one version of this so far. Um, I've made the full length sleeve version with a gathered cuff and everything and I absolutely love it. And I keep meaning to make another one and I thought for spring and summer time I'd actually make a short sleeve version like the one that the pattern um, model is wearing in this pattern image here because obviously that would be better suited for spring and summertime. I really love all the details in this blouse. It has a really lovely gathered yoke detail to the back and I just love the flat collar and the deep sort of v-neck and everything. Um, yeah, I just absolutely love it. 
So for that plan, I've had this um, viscose twill fabric in my stash for quite a while now and not really knowing what to make with it. And I thought that would be quite perfect really for the patina blouse and I thought that would be a really nice spring and summer make. It's a really delicate sort of pale pink background with some um, spray patterns all over it in burgundy and navy. It's just lovely. And I've had this for so long and I've had various sort of vague plans for it. None of them have really ever come into fruition. So I thought this would maybe be a good one to make the patina blouse in. So stay tuned for that one. Um, I'm really looking forward to making another patina blouse. And it'll be a bit different from all the dress patterns that I have for spring and summer so far. <laughs> you can tell how enthusiastic I was last week when it was really sunny and hot and um, yeah, I was just planning all the summer makes and ordering all the fabrics and yeah, getting a bit carried away really and today it's been freezing cold and back to typical British spring weather, it's raining and horrible <laughs> so I'm not quite sure we're heading towards spring and summer quite yet but um, I can still plan anyway. So lastly, a knitting plan. So you'll know from my recent makes video that I've just finished up all of the knitting projects that I did have on the go and um, I said I had a new one that I just started. And what I've started is the Whitmore cardigan by Amy Loudon of Tailoress Studios. So I'll pop in an image here of the pattern so you can see what it looks like. And you may remember, if you followed me as far back as last year when I was talking about my maid nine, I did say that I wanted to make the Whitmore sweater, um, which is a lovely jumper that's knit um, in a yoke on a round. I'm not quite brave enough to attempt that yet because I still haven't knitted anything completely in the round. And I thought, as a starting point, I would try the cardigan first and get myself used to the lace pattern and everything because I believe the lace pattern in the cardigan is the same as the pattern from the jumper. So if I have a go at this and I manage to do the lace pattern and get this uh, jumper cardigan all knitted up, then maybe I will then attempt the sweater. <laughs> um, but it is going to be a difficult one. It's going to be probably the most difficult pattern that I've ever attempted because I've not really... Well, I have knitted um, a cardigan in the round with a yoke because I've knitted the petite knit novice cardigan. But that one was just straight stocking stitch, so it's a little bit simpler than this one. This one's got a quite a um, an involved lace pattern to it, but I really wanted to try and push myself a bit more with my knitting this year, so I think this will, will be a good one. So. The yarn I've got for this one was a cheapy one from Love Crafts. It's a bamboo and cotton natural yarn, it's called um, by Stylecraft. And it's basically just a double knitting cotton blend yarn. And um, I went for it in this sort of blush pink colour. It's actually similar to the Cara sweater that I've just knitted actually, and I didn't realise that at all when I bought this, but it's obviously just the colour that I am drawn towards along with grey. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I wanted to get a, a sort of cheapy one, not too expensive, just to try it out with. But actually this is really lovely and really soft and I think it would be a nice one for warmer weather. Um, so yeah, I've got enough of that to try out this cardigan. And I have cast it on, but I haven't got very far with it yet. So this is a really interesting pattern actually. So it's knit, um, I don't know if you call it on the round still because it is straight, but it's knit on a circular needle and the button band is actually knit at the same time as the rest of the cardigan. So you kind of hold the button band on um, DPN needles and then you knit that as part of the cardigan as you're going along. So there's absolutely no seaming up to do at all of this cardigan when you're finished, which is quite nice. Um, but I am finding at the moment that these getting in the way a little bit as I'm knitting and they're so long <laughs> and I don't know if there are other needles like shorter ones that I can get to do the button band. Let me know if you are a more advanced knitter than me, maybe you know of um, certain type of needle that I can use to do the button band on while I'm knitting the rest of the cardigan because yeah it's a bit of a fiddle really to sort of um, move these around and then knit the rest of your row. And I did find a couple of times that the stitches just slid off of the button band needles, so I'm having to be careful with that. But really, I've only done two rows of this so far. So maybe by the time you're watching this, I will have done a little bit more. But I will keep you updated as to how I get on with that one. But I'm feeling as though maybe it would be nice to have an easier project on the go as well. Like I had with my Cara sweater and my Toucan Snood and Warmers, it was like a lace project and a really easy garter stitch project. 
so it's quite nice to switch between the two so I might look for something easy as well that I can have on the go as well as this one so that I can just pick it up if I don't want to have to concentrate too much but that's my next knitting plan let me know if you have knitted the Whitmore cardigan in the comments and let me know how you found it and any tips or anything that you have to give me because this will be quite a tricky one for me I think but I'm looking forward to giving it a go Okay, so I think that's all my plans really for April and beyond. I hope you like the new fabrics that I've chosen. Let me know if there's anything that you're particularly looking forward to sewing up for spring. I'm really looking forward to trying out that named clothing pattern actually. I think that's going to be really lovely and a good, um, a good one for summertime I think. I do love a button down shirt dress as you know. <laughs> Thank you for watching everyone. If you have enjoyed the video please do give it a like and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel I'd love you to do so if you feel like you'd like to. Um, and don't forget to click the notification bell because I am back every week really with a new video to share with you about sewing and knitting. Have a lovely day everyone and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!